it's interesting because a number isn't always a number. There's four different scales of measurement that we use in statistics. And you'll see us used also in our statistical software program, uh, SPSS. The scales of measurement are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. So those are our four different scales of measurement that we're working with. Nominal means that we're working with categories and the numbers are names. So if I were to ask you, you know, hey, what's your, your favorite animal? Let me know the number. In fact, I'm actually gonna ask you that. So in the chat window, go ahead and type in which number corresponds to your favorite pet. And uh, well, we've got quite a few people indicating that a five is their favorite pet, which is the dog. Uh, other ones, uh, let's see, six, cat, four, which, <laughs> is, that a, is that a ferret? <laughs> That's cute. Uh, and then, yeah, let's five, and a seven, goldfish. We own four goldfish in our family. Uh, and so there you go. Cool. So that's an example of a survey that we've just done. And the numbers are, are arbitrary. <clears throat> in other words, it's not like a dog is five times better than, than a hamster or a gerbil or whatever that thing is on the left, uh, or that a snake is like the coolest thing because it's a nine. We just kind of arbitrarily put the numbers out there. And if you're a fan of sports, you know, numbers are used in this way. We'll say number 52, and then they tell us what number 52 did, right? And so the number is just a, a name. It's not really a measurement, it's a name. So nominal means name. So uh, sometimes in a survey, we'll ask a question like, what state are you born in? And the person could put in like a one, a two, a three, and a four. And the whole idea is just to reduce the effort in recording people's responses. Like who wants to type in California? You just press one or Oregon, you just press two, right? So it makes the data entry really easy. You're just putting in one or two digits and they stand for something else. So it's like a code. All right, then another way that we use numbers for surveys would be ordinal. So I have here as pictures, uh, people based upon what decade of life they're in. So the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, you know, presumably we also have the 70s, 80s, and, you know, and 10s and so on. But let's say that you know, people we're working with are somewhere between the 20s and the 60s. So you could say, okay, you know, please indicate which decade of life you're in. And if someone is 49, they put in a four. And if they're 51, they put in a five. And if they're 59, they put in a five. And if they're 23, they put in a two, right? So <clears throat> these are categories, you know, what decade are you in as a category? And, but what's different between ordinal and nominal is that we can rank these, you know, that the 60s occurs later than the 50s, which occurs later in the 40s. Uh, someone might say, oh, well, dogs are better than cats, which are better than fish, but not necessarily everyone's going to agree with that, right? So that's one aspect. Also, like, what year of college are you in? You know, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, you know, we could put a, a one for, for freshman, a two for sophomore, a three for junior, a four for uh, senior. Those are categories, which year you're in. Uh, and a four would mean that someone has had more years of college than a three, a two, or a one, right? So we have categories where they can be ranked. Likewise, you know, if we're like, who won a gold medal? Who won a silver medal? Who won a bronze medal? Gold goes to first place, silver to second place, bronze to third place. But, you know, it could be that the first place and the second place person were really close in their race, or it can be that they're really far apart. We don't know. We just know who came in first and who came in second. We don't know the distance uh, or how much their performance differed. We just have their order. So ordinal, think order, right? So these categories are, are ordered, you know, grade A, B, C, D, and F. Again, that's example of, of ordinal uh, as well. And an example of a survey question that you might see that we classify as ordinal would be how often do you eat out? Could be like every day, several times a week, once a week or other, right? So, um, yeah, you can go ahead. Here. So like every day is gonna be more frequent than several times a week, which is more frequent than once a week, which is more frequent than other, right? So the, they're numbers, they represent categories, but categories that have order to them. 
So those are nominal and ordinal. We're, we're working with categories. Nominal are categories that can't be ranked and ordinal are categories that have a clear ranking that most people would agree upon. So that's not really like numbers as we typically think of it. It's more like names. Interval is the first time we get to say it's more like a, like a number. So one example of an interval scale is when people are asked to rank their like satisfaction. Like when I, one of the reasons why I really like buying things on Amazon is I can look up different products and see how well they've been ranked by people who are evaluated by people who previously purchased them, right? So if something has two stars, I don't care how nice their uh, advertising looks, I'm like two stars, not happening, right? Whereas if it has like four and a half stars, I'm like, and it has like a thousand reviewers, right? And I'm like, well, hey, a lot of people reviewed it. A lot of people think thought really highly of it. That looks good to me, right? So if you can uh, rank things, that is, is interval. The idea is that the distance between four stars to three stars, three stars to two stars, two stars to one stars is the same distance. It's like a number line. Uh, if I ask, you know, like how satisfied were you when you called Amazon with a complaint, you know, did they address it? And you could be like, hey, it's excellent, which could be like a two. Uh, average could be a zero, very poor could be a negative two. Um, and so again, it's thought that the distance between these is the same distance each time. Um, if you've heard of the SAT as a college uh, preparatory uh, test you can take, uh, it has an average score of, uh, it looks like here, 1,500. When I took it, you only had two components, each worth 800 points. So when I took an average score was, I think it was, it was yeah, it was 800. 1600 was like amazing. And, you know, below uh, 800 would be less amazing. And so with the SAT, it's not like a zero means the absence of, of intelligence. Uh, and that's an important thing to be aware of with interval. Interval, you have equal size intervals, like a number line, but you don't have a true zero. Zero doesn't mean the absence of like satisfaction here. Um, Zero doesn't mean the absence of, of scholastic ability. It's just an arbitrary value. What is true is that there is an equal size distance between 1,400 to 1,500, 1,500 to 1,600, 1,600 to 1,700, and, and, and so on. So you have a number line. Numbers fall along the number line. They're equally spaced apart. However, zero does not indicate the absence of what's measured. And, and here are some examples of a survey uh, question you might, might see. Uh, what is your preferred temperature? in Fahrenheit for a day at the beach, right? So with Fahrenheit, it's interesting, 32 degrees, which is when water freezes, the guy who developed the Fahrenheit scale, his wife was 32. So he's like, let's go with that. Um, zero degrees on the Fahrenheit scale doesn't mean anything. Water doesn't freeze, it's not the absence of heat. It's just another, it just means it's colder than one <laughs> and warmer than negative one. Uh, and, and that's it. If I ask you, what time is it? Uh, even if you think like military time, like zero uh, to 2,400, that doesn't mean the absence of time. It just means it's like midnight. Um, so zero doesn't mean the absence of what's measured. Or if I say, hey, what's your IQ score? IQ scores are specifically designed so that the average IQ score is 100. Uh, and so anyone who has an IQ, IQ score above 100 is above average. Anyone who has an IQ score below 100 would be below average. Uh, but zero doesn't mean the absence of intelligence. It's just, it just would mean really, really low IQ score. So again, nominal and ordinal, these are dealing with categories, either categories you can't rank or categories you can rank. Now we're actually dealing with the number line. But there isn't necessarily a, a true zero. Fourth and final of these scales of measurement is ratio. So ratio, you, you have that number line, but now zero really means the absence of what's being measured. And this allows you to do things like say, um, there are twice as many, um, uh, let's see, uh, I spent twice as much today as I spent yesterday. So say something like twice as much, that's ratio. 
I could also say I spent half as much as I spent yesterday. That's another example of a ratio. Or I spent one fourth as much as I spent yesterday or I spent four times as much. Those are ratios. I'm comparing how much I spent today with yesterday using such things as twice or half or one fourth. You can only do ratios though of zero means the absence of what's measured. So for example, a bathroom scale, right? If someone is 160 pounds, they weigh twice as much as someone who is 80 pounds. Now for an IQ or SAT score, it's not like someone with an SAT score of 1600 is twice as smart as an, as an SAT score of 800. Those are just, 1600 is more than 800. It's exactly 800 more, but it's not like it's twice as much. It's not like excellent means someone is twice as satisfied as good. So for interval, there's no true zero. So you can say the difference between average and excellence is the same as between very poor and average. It's a difference of two. But since there's not a true zero, you can't say twice as much or, or half as much as when you have ratio, right? So, and if my car speedometer says I'm going zero miles per hour, my car is parked. It's not going anywhere. And uh, 30 miles an hour is half as fast as 60 miles. So those are our four scales. And we'll be using those throughout the semester. And it's important to know those scales because when we use our statistical software package, that I'll say, hey, what scale of measurement are you using? Because that's going to affect uh, how you describe the data and how you could analyze the data. And we'll get into more detail. Here's a, a, a chart that just kind of goes over again, those four different scales of measurement. So nominal, ordinal, interval, ratio. Nominal just means a category. Ordinal, it's a category that you can rank. Interval, now there's equal spacing. And ratio, not only is there equal spacing, but there's a true zero, right? So what I'm gonna have you do at this point is do a class survey. And it has questions such as, what is your favorite pet? You can put in a one for dog, two for cat, three for bird, or four for other. You'll also be asked, what year are you in college? Zero would be high school student. One is a freshman or first year student. Two is a sophomore, second year. Three would be junior, four would be senior, and five would be already earned a college degree. Uh, we'll have what is the approximate temperature in Fahrenheit where you are. So don't stress over this, just give me uh, some approximation. And finally, how many hours of TV shows, videos did you watch yesterday? Was it a binge day or a casual day, right? So these are four questions that uh, I'd like you to go ahead and respond to. And as you respond to it, your responses will show up over here in the spreadsheet. Uh, favorite pet was a one. So you have to make sure somewhere you wrote down what a one means, right? So uh, favorite pet, most people put dog here, uh, but we also got a four, which is other, and we got a two, uh, which was cat. All right, so I'm surrounded by dog lovers here. I feel comfortable, and cat lovers, I do like cats too. Uh, and then you're in college. Uh, we have someone here who has completed college, has their college degree. Uh, we have... Uh, some people in their second or first year, and that'd be the, the typical community college experience. And we also had what is the approximate temperature where you are, and it looks like it was pretty cold. Uh, and then in terms of watching television, it looks like there was no one who went without TV. So all of us were getting in our favorite television show. So I now have these four variables. They correspond to the questions being asked in the survey. And I'm gonna make this a little bit wider. And I'm asked, hey, what's the measure, right? It says here, measure unknown. So join me over here in this column called measure. And I get to choose three measures. So, you know, I talked about nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Well, SPSS says it's just going to treat interval and ratio as the same. But it does have a little ruler here, which kind of helps. So either it's categories that you can't rank, categories that you can rank or a number as far as SPSS is concerned. So favorite pet, that was nominal. These are the numbers represent categories that I can't rank. Now college year, that was ordinal, right? These are categories that you can rank. So I'll choose ordinal for that. Temperature is interval. 
And so SPSS combines interval and ratio and just calls it scale. So I'll choose scale. And hours watching video, that was ratio. And again, that's just gonna refer to a scale. So we've now defined four variables and we've indicated what scale of measurement they're in. 